At its heart, HTML is a fairly simple language made up of elements, which can be applied to pieces of text to give them different meanings in a document. They'll also give structure to a document and separate it into logical sections. We'll need to ask the question, like, is it a paragraph? Is it a bulleted list? Is it part of a table? Does it have a header? In this module, I will introduce these concepts and syntax that you need to know in order to understand HTML. Specifically, we'll be looking at HTML text fundamentals. One of HTML's main jobs is to give text meaning. This is also known as semantics. We do this so that the browser knows how to display the text correctly. Most structured text follows this pattern. It contains headings and paragraphs. Think of things like a newspaper, a magazine, a textbook, or the web. Structured content makes the reading experience easier and more enjoyable. We will look at how to use HTML to break up a block of text into a structure of headings and paragraphs, add emphasis and importance to words, create lists, and more. But why do we need structure? Here I have a code pen that has some text in it. And the text actually has line breaks, which separate the content. But because I have no HTML formatting, the text is going to just appear when it's rendered in the browser window as one long sentence. This is a horrible experience. There's no hierarchy. There's no visual space. It's very difficult to consume this content. Users looking at a web page tend to scan quickly to find relevant content. Often they just read the headings to begin with. We usually spend a very short time on a web page. If a user can't see anything useful within a few seconds, they're likely to get frustrated and go somewhere else. Search engines indexing the page consider the content of headings as important keywords for influencing the page's search ranking. Without headings, your page will perform poorly in terms of SEO. Severely visually impaired people often don't read web pages. They listen to them instead. This is done with software called a screen reader. This software provides ways to get fast access to given text content. Among the various techniques used, they provide an outline of the document by reading out the headings and allowing the users to find the information they need quickly. If headings are not available, they will be forced to listen to the entire document read out loud. And finally, to style content with CSS or to make it do interesting things with JavaScript. You need to have elements wrapping around relevant content so that CSS and JavaScript can effectively target it. Therefore, we need to give our content structural markup. In programming, semantics refers to the meaning of a piece of code. What purpose or role does that HTML element have, rather than what does it look like? In HTML, an H1 element is a semantic element. It gives the text that it wraps around the role or meaning of a top-level heading on the web page. By default, most browsers will style an H1 with a large font size and make it bold to make it look like a heading. Now, once we learn CSS, we can style this to look like anything you want. But for right now, we're just going to concentrate on the built-in browser styling. It is worth noting that you can make any element look like a top-level heading. So we could style a paragraph tag to look like a heading. It's going to visually render that paragraph tag to look like a top level heading, but it will have no semantic value. So we won't get the extra benefits that I just described. It's a good idea to use the right HTML element for the right job. HTML should be coded to represent the data that will be populated and not based on its default presentation styling. Presentation, which is how it should look, is the sole responsibility of CSS. When approaching which markup to use, ask yourself what element best describes or represents the data that I'm going to populate. 
For example, is it a list of data? Is it ordered or unordered? As we learn more about HTML, you'll need to make more involved semantic choices in regards to the structural markup. It's really up to you to decide what the elements involved represent. As long as the hierarchy makes sense, you just need to bear in mind a few of these additional best practices to create your semantic structure. Preferably, you should only use a single H1 per page or section. Remember, this is the top level heading and all the others are going to sit below this in the hierarchy. You want to make sure that you use headings in the correct order in the hierarchy. Don't use H3 elements to represent subheadings followed by an H2 element to represent a sub subheading. That doesn't make sense and it will lead to weird results. Of the six heading levels available, you should aim to use no more than three per page unless you feel that it's necessary to use more. Documents with many levels, something that would have deep heading hierarchy, become unwieldy and difficult to navigate. If this occasion arises, it's advisable to spread the content over multiple pages, if at all possible. Let's go back and look at this text that I've placed inside of CodePen. Let's go ahead and create the structure so that this page now is going to make more semantic sense. In general, when we have a title or a headline, we want that to represent the title of our page. So we will generally make that an H1 tag. Now here I have more of a byline. This is the person that's done the research for this particular article. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that inside a paragraph tag. Next, we have a description about what bat rays are all about. So I'll go ahead and I'll put an H2 tag here. Then I'm going to have some additional sub sub headlines that are going to describe certain attributes about bat rays. So I'll use H3s for those. And finally, the comments that are going to be underneath each of these sub sub headlines are going to be paragraphs. So I'll just go ahead and complete the structure of this page. And as you can see, by just adding these semantic tags, the text that displays in the browser window is much more organized. Granted, this is a very simple page, but we do have a hierarchy that visually makes sense when we look at the content on the page. This is going to be your goal when you build any web page. You're going to want to think about the hierarchy and what each element represents in regards to the rest of the content around it. The elements are what give the content structure, and that's going to allow the browser to display the page in a more meaningful way. Under the hood, it also goes ahead and identifies the various sections of the code with specific sorts of meaning, which is going to benefit us in a number of ways. Some of these are the things that I've mentioned earlier in this particular lecture.